sometimes with the windows you run into problems that other people can't solve right but here we are you know got the lens over there what's he doing he's working on the window across the way i'm looking through a window here that has no sashes in it but i've got the solution for that right out here on this little front porch will be my portable sash factory. While these guys are working on the windows, I'll be making the sashes. All right, so here we are. Got the sash factory all set up, ready to make window sashes. So, let's see, sash factory, chop saw, jointer, planer, bandsaw I'm not going to use, the general purpose table saw, tanning table saw, meeting rail, table saw, and a mortiser, should be able to get it done. Oh, and I went ahead and put together some test pieces, make sure everything was still dialed in properly meeting rail for the uh, bottom sash meeting rail for the top sash and just regular joint mortise and tenon joint for the uh, top rail and the bottom rail so ready to go well there it is sash for one of those openings in there so made in i guess less than an hour you know even with setting all this stuff up so 10 30 started about 8 8 30 setting everything up pumped out of sash already So these are sashes that I made on the mobile sash factory. Well, this is one sash. I've got others I've already put together. Here I'm just doweling the corner. Going at a diagonal there. Um, the intention of putting two dowels there to hold it rigidly square right because I, I had to square the, the frame up a little bit to help hold it I put the dowels it diagonals Five sixteenths inch drill bit. I did not go all the way through. And so for a five sixteenths drill bit, I cut a piece of square stock five sixteenths inch square. So I'm just going to manually round them, and they're going to be generally round, not perfectly round. I think there's an advantage to having them not perfectly round because the, the ridges will, I think, dig into the sides a little bit and help kind of keep it from spinning and holding in there. I mean, round ones are fine, don't get me wrong, but I think a lot of people would be held up by their rigid belief that only perfectly round dowels are acceptable 
you know, of a hardwood variety or something when they're out searching for the right way to make a round dowel, I'll be done. So. There we go. And another thing I'll do is uh, just take a dab of glue. Not a lot. I'm just going to put it in a corner of the hole just to hold the dowel in place. I'm not gluing my joint, per se, but I'm just putting a little bit of glue on the dowel so that um, a little bit of glue on the dowel so that the dowel doesn't expand and contract and fall out by just natural processes. Nothing special, you know, nothing complicated. Just common sense type stuff, you know. Japanese pull saw. Notice I'm trying to cut with the grain. So I'm going to scar, at least it'll be scarred that way. Cool. And then nice. And then that basically does the trick. So. What do you think about that? And all of that, all of this whole entire sash is made on this little front porch. Mobile style. So. Ta-da. Excellent. It's too tight? Yeah. Out of sight. We should be able to put it in without a fight. <laughs> Wow, you've really seen the light. There we go. John's got it in good for the night. Stop in like John. Okay. And there it is. Ta-da! Oh man. Now he's gotta go in and put some hardware on that thing. It'll be in good shape. What's the oh my goodness. You know what that is? That's that rope, man. The, the weight's bottoming out. The rope's too long. Oh, he 
you got it fixed. There it is. Excellent. Good job, guys. Well, wait. <laughs>